Assalamu alaikum. I'm going to get Instagram started and then we'll get on with today's session. With so many books out there, how do you choose which ones to buy? When you go to the library, how do you choose which ones to take home? When you log on to Amazon or online, how do you choose from the millions of books that are out there? So in today's live broadcast, I'm going to be sharing three ways to know which books to choose for your children. Three things to look for when you're buying books for your kids. Assalamu alaikum, Amina, Safia, nice that you're all joining me, alhamdulillah, Tanya. Um, so if you don't know me already, guys, my name is Dr. Jamra Elizabeth. I'm the founder of the award-winning blog, OurMuslimHomeschool.com. I am the, uh, the host of this podcast, Raising Mums. I am the creator of the online homeschooling course, Launch Your Homeschool. I've got four kids and we homeschool in the northwest of England. And I thought this would be a really helpful topic for you today because I know we've got Ramadan coming up. A lot of people like to buy books in preparation for Ramadan. You like to buy um, books to give us gifts at Eid. And also I know a lot of you are homeschoolers. Um, or are interested in homeschooling and so we want to know about books you know we, we're always buying books we're always researching books so I thought this would be really helpful to a lot of you guys Asalaamu As Alaikum Fatima um, so before we get into today's session we have to introduce our sponsor for this episode so today's episode is sponsored by Tutorful Tutorful is the trusted way to find a tutor and they make tuition accessible to everybody. They offer tuition in over 300 subjects and have thousands of tutors in academic subjects, as well as thousands of highly qualified tutors in other subjects like languages, music, and even more specialized subjects like photography and coding. They have been rated as excellent on Trustpilot with 4.8 out of five stars um, from over 2,600 reviews. They're trusted by 200,000 parents and students. They've taught more than 1.5 million lessons. So they are a big, big company. Um, and they are diligent about vetting their tutors um, before they're allowed onto the site. They have over 11,000 highly experienced tutors, which means for you as a parent that you get access to the very best tutors here in the UK. Um, they also offer a satisfaction guarantee to users, which means that if you're not 100% satisfied with your first lesson for your child, they will pay for another lesson with a different tutor, no questions asked. Um, they make the process of finding a tutor easy and affordable, and the prices of tuition start from £15 per hour with no hidden fees. The way it works is that you will browse through a list of tutors that they match you with, and then you look through their profiles and you learn more about the qualifications and their teaching styles. And when you think you've found the perfect tutor for you, you can chat with them via a messaging service or you can have a free complimentary call with them to discuss the needs of your child. You'll then be able to um, review uh, thousands of other uh, parents' thoughts on those tutors until you find exactly the right tutor for your child. Um, they all the lessons are personalized and tailored to your child's needs and the lessons themselves take place online on their own purpose-built classroom you can see and speak to that tutor through the webcam your child will work with that tutor on an intuitive whiteboard and you share and edit documents in their platform itself so if you're interested in finding out more about Tutorful and getting the perfect tutor for your children you can click on the link with this video. So wherever you're watching this video, there will be a link to Tutorful. If you're listening to the podcast, it's in the show notes. And on Instagram, Tutorful, you can find their link in my profile. Okay, so let's get into today's episode. The three things to look for when choosing books for your children. Hi guys, Asalaamu As Alaikum, Aisha, Montessori Homeschooling, UAE. Awesome, I appreciate you being here. I'll just have a sip of water before we start. Okay, so you go to the library and there are thousands of books there. How do you choose which one to take home? You go to the bookshop. Again, there are thousands. 
How do you choose which one to invest in? How do you choose which one to put your money into so that you don't get home and you're disappointed? You don't want to buy a book that's a one-hit wonder that only gets read once and gets hidden away on the shelf again. Um, or worse still, has something in it that you're not comfortable with your children reading. How do you discern between all the books there? Or if you go onto Amazon or Abe Books or Bookshop.org, wherever you buy your books online, there are millions of books. How do you pick just one or two for your kids? So the first thing to look for when you're choosing books for your children, would you read it? Would you, as a parent, as a mother, as a father, read that book? Because good children's books can be enjoyed by adults as well. If you, um, if you open up that book, say you're at the bookshop, and you open up that front cover and you look inside, does it interest you? Read the first page, flick through it a little bit, read through the first page. Does the language, do you find it intriguing? Do you find it interesting? Does it captivate you? Or is it babyish? Is it speaking down to the child? Is it bland? Is it dry? Or even worse, if it's a religious book, is it preachy? If it's fun and captivating and you want to turn the next page, then that is a winner. And chances are, if you think that, your children will think that too. Now, to be fair, you know, you and your children will not always like the same books. You won't always have the same taste, but there are so many good books out there that you will both enjoy. So if you open up that book and you think, this is good, you know, I'm interested in what happens next. I like these illustrations. This seems like a really good book. The chances are your children will think that too. Um, and it's likewise, you know, you and your kids won't always have the same interests. You know, your kids might be really interested in cars and you haven't got the least bit of interest in cars or dinosaurs or whatever it might be. But still, if you look at a book and you think, this is really nicely written, this is well written, um, it's not dry or preachy, um, the illustrations are interesting, then chances are your children will like it too. And on Amazon, you can, for many of the books, look inside them. So take that opportunity to, to do that. Um, don't just buy a book based on the front cover. Don't just buy a book based on the fact that, you know, it's, it's published by a company that you know. Try and look inside it before you invest the money. I mean, this touches upon an idea that is well known in Charlotte Mason philosophy of education, which is the idea of living books. Now, a living book has more to it than this, but it is this idea that the book brings the subject to life. Um, it doesn't speak down to the child. It respects the child's intelligence, that they are capable of understanding um, richer language, interesting language. Now, rich language and interesting language does not mean difficult. Don't confuse the two. Rich and interesting language just means it has a bit of depth, a bit of grit. It's not dry. And we all know, we all know children's books that you read and it just, it just drags on. That's what I'm talking about. It's the opposite of a living book. Um, I would love to know while we're talking, what are some of your favorite children's books? Yours or your children's? Share it in the comments. It'd be a really nice resource for everybody who's here as well um, to see what other books people are recommending. So please, by all means, put it in the comments. Um, now, if you're not a reader and you don't feel like you necessarily would know good language from dry language and you don't have that confidence in yourself, then there's a second way that you can find good books for your children. And that is by using the recommendations of people who know books, who know about good books. I hope like me, I have a lot of book lists on my website and on YouTube. Um, I don't share too much on Facebook and Instagram, but if you go to my website or my YouTube channel, you'll find a lot of book lists, curriculum choices, which are again, lists of books. Um, so go to our Muslim homeschool to find those. But also, I really like some of the accounts that you find on social media. There's a lot of amazing homeschooling mums uh, or just, you know, mums with young kids who share book reviews. One of my favourites on Instagram is Let's Learn Mama, um, Eva. She shares a lot of great Islamic children's books, um, as particularly for slightly older children. And she's a great source of information. So if you don't follow Eva, go check out Let's Learn Mama. But there's a lot of other great um, Instagram and Facebook accounts that share non-biased um, reviews of children's books. Um, online, 
There are many sites that, that list good book recommendations. Um, I would recommend looking at Mensa, M-E-N-S-A, for book lists. Um, there are Charlotte Mason homeschool book lists as well. And the, the only issue there is that almost all of them are for the Christian audience. Now, actually, I don't think that is too big a deal, personally, because what that usually means is that those book lists will not include books that have any lewd language, any kind of romance or adult scenes. So you can be quite sure on a Christian book list that you would be safe in those areas. But of course, you have to check the religious aspects as well. Another place to look for good books would be the books that have won literary prizes. Um, if a book's got a, a seal on it or an award of some sort, chances are it's a good book. Um, what I want to warn you all of is the power of marketing. It, just because you see a book on Instagram, say you, you go on Instagram one weekend and it seems like every other, every other square on Instagram, every other post on Facebook is about the same book or you saw it again yesterday, you saw it, you see it the next day. Just because it's on Facebook and Instagram a lot does not mean that it's a good book. What it means is that the publishing house or the author who wrote it has sent copies of that book out at the same time to multiple people, to multiple influencers, um, to multiple people online, and they share it as they would. If I had written a book, if I was a publishing house, I would do the same thing. Um, and if I got sent books, I would feel obliged to share them as well. So just be aware as the consumer, as the mother, just because it's all over social media, that doesn't mean that it's a good book. It just means that that person who wrote it or that publishing house that published it is really got the game on when it comes to marketing, um, marketing that book and has decided to market it heavily. So just be a bit savvy and just be aware of that. Um, and it's one of the reasons why now I very rarely accept books for free anymore. Um, and I very rarely do book reviews anymore. It's just because I want to maintain that integrity. If I think a book is good and I share it with you, you know that I have purchased that book with my own money um, and I genuinely do love it. Um, okay, the third way. The third way to choose books for your children is to let them choose. Now this goes against everything I just said about you know choosing books that are recommended, about choosing books that have rich language, because chances are your children will not choose the award-winning books. <laughs> they will not choose the books with rich language. They will probably choose Barry Loser or something nonsensical like that. But hear me out. Giving your children ownership of that choice, allowing them to choose their own books now and again, is how you raise readers. It makes reading into a treat. It makes books into a reward. When you go to the library and you say to them, you can pick any book you like. Just you go ahead and whatever you pick, we can take it home. Now, obviously in the back of your mind, you're thinking, well, accept this and accept that. You have a few exceptions in the back of your mind, but you don't need to tell your children that. Just tell them, go ahead, choose whatever you want. And the excitement and the joy that will come from that experience will, will be contagious. They will rush around, they will be flicking through all the books, they'll be piling them up, they'll be you know, discussing them with their brother or sister. That excitement about books translates into an excitement about reading because they get home, they start reading. Um, and then when they do that, they start to identify themselves as a reader. Somebody who gets excited about books identifies themselves as a reader. And when you identify yourself as a reader, you identify yourself as a learner. And that is what we want for our children. We want our children to think of themselves as learners. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, everybody, if you read a lot, you learn a lot. That's what we want for our kids. So, the third way to choose books for your kids is to not choose them, but actually to let your children choose them. <coughs> okay, I'm gonna give my voice a rest. If you've got questions, pop it in the comments now.
<clears throat> okay, let's see what Instagram has got going on. <clears throat> so, Earthly Delights Gift says, Bumble the Little Bear with Big Ideas. She's recommending that by Marin McGee, ages two to five. Okay, sounds cute. I don't know that book, but mashallah, sounds good. <clears throat> yeah, our legacy is agreeing that Let's Learn Mama is an awesome account for book recommendations. Okay, we've got a recommendation of Enid Blyton's short stories. Funny stories with morals. Yeah, yeah. Roald Dahl is very good, someone's saying. Planet Omar, yes, my boys enjoy Planet Omar a lot. Um, okay, I think that's all we've got here. Yeah, so someone's saying, can we leave it to the kids to choose? Yes, you can. I mean, personally for me, because we homeschool, there has to be, some books have to be a little bit more uh, meaty, if you like, than what the kids might necessarily choose. So in our home, I would say 80% I choose, 20% they choose. What they read before bed, their decision. What we pick up at the library, their decision entirely. I give them that freedom. Um, when we go to the bookshop, on those rare occasions when I say, go ahead, pick anything you like, they, they, that's their ownership. But homeschooling books, books I order from Amazon, that's usually uh, my decision because of we are a home educating family. Rida is saying Winnie the Pooh. Yes, I love Winnie the Pooh. One of my favorites. Yeah, great choice. Um, okay, I'm not getting any comments on Facebook, so I hope my system is working okay. Right, so I'm gonna wrap it up here. But I'll just give you a, a recap, the three ways to pick books, the three things to look for when you're picking books for your children. The first thing, would you read it? Would you read that book? Um, if you would, chances are your children will enjoy it too. Secondly, um, use recommendations of people who know about books. So go to ourmuslimhomeschool.com, look at the book list there. Um, also, some of the ones I mentioned online, Charlotte Mason homeschooling lists like Ambleside Online, Simply Charlotte Mason, and Read Aloud Revival have some great lists for picture books. Not so much the older books, but I do like the lists for picture books. Um, and look for literary prizes as well. Um, be a bit more savvy as well when it comes to what's being publicized and what's being promoted on social media. And the final thing is let your children choose. Give them some ownership and let them get excited about choosing books and reading books as well. So I want to leave you with a quote by Charlotte Mason. And she said, thought breeds thought. Children familiar with great thoughts take as naturally to thinking for themselves as the well-nourished body takes to growing. We must bear in mind that growth, physical, intellectual, moral, spiritual, is the sole end of education. Um, and it is in the books that you choose for your children or that your children choose that they will come across these thoughts. So choose wisely. Right, don't forget, um, if you are looking for a tutor, check out Tutorful. The link for their site is with this video, with this podcast and Instagram. It is in my profile. Um, and I will see you again next Sunday, inshallah, for another episode of Raising Mums. I appreciate you all for being here. Um, I want to acknowledge you all for being here and joining me live on your Sunday afternoon when I'm sure there are other things to be doing. Um, so I appreciate seeing you all here and I hope I'll see you again next Sunday. Asalaamu Alaikum.